If you're struggling to find your first job in the environmental field, here's three tips that'll help you out that I've picked up along the way. My name's Danny, and this is Ecology Story Mode. So my background is federal, state, and NGO work. These first two tips, I think you can kind of apply to any sort of job, but the third tip is definitely specific to federal work. So if you're not interested in that part, you can just skip over the end of the video. My first tip would be to really open up the uh, terms that you're searching for when you're looking for work. When I was working in an office in California, the field manager in that office that was doing all the hiring, I talked to her and she essentially explained to me that she had two seasonal positions that were opening up for six month appointments. And one of them just said biological technician. And the second one said biological technician weeds. Essentially, she explained that those two were the same job, just one of them got extra trainings and had to do more specific work. Exact same pay, exact same job. One just added extra training and extra qualifications for future positions. The job that was the biological science technician had 52 applicants, but the job that said weeds on it had only two. She explained to me that that was kind of one of the easy ways to get started was to look for the jobs that say weeds, a range on them, and pretty much any version of the job that you see that seems a little bit less desirable or not exactly like what somebody coming out of college would imagine their job would look like is the easiest way to get started out because the least people are applying to those positions. My second tip would be to be more open to more locations. When I first started searching for jobs, I was like, I want to be near where I live. I was looking for jobs in Austin, New York, and I, I had a very narrow search that I was very bound to determined to kind of land within a certain area. Eventually for me, what happened was desperation. I made the decision that I wanted to have an environmental job. I didn't want to settle for something else. So I finally opened up my actual search and was a lot more accepting to just apply to any job posting, which is a really common thing for people in the federal system to do is apply to every job posting in a saved search. I applied to multiple bulk postings, which are essentially a job posting that you go into uh, through USA Jobs that says many vacancies and shows 50 locations. And I just said, apply to all, however many they let me, I would just send my application out to all of them. So after six months of hitting a real work dry spell after my last uh, outdoors job, I finally ended up landing a job in what was legitimately the least populated county in the lower 48. It was nice because that was, even though that was a six month job, it, it gave me connections and allowed me to apply way more easily to full-time positions, which is what I'm currently doing right now. So I'm refilming because how I was talking was kind of disorienting for me. Essentially, this tip works the same way as the last one because it puts you in a position where you're applying where there's not as many other applicants, not just federally, but I'm sure that if you're an environmental science major or something, you're looking at environmental job boards, the a and board, and these are all really typical things to look at and people see hundreds of postings and they're all gonna go for the ones that look really good. This tip is essentially look for the ones that look like they're a little bit more remote. 30 minutes outside of the city is gonna have way less people applying to it than a post that's inside of the city. I got lucky enough to where I was able to travel across the country and know that there's not really many parts of the United States that I don't like and I don't think I couldn't see myself working in, especially not for a short period of time. So that really allowed me to be a lot more open-minded and be a lot more willing to accept uh, jobs in different places. Now my third job tip, and this is the one that's kind of specific to if you want to go into the federal service, is being open to choosing a job that starts you out at a GS5 level and moves you on to another level. One thing I didn't realize when I first started applying is just how complicated federal applications are and how, fa how complicated the whole system is. So I would always look at the GS5 to 9 or 11 jobs and think, oh, I, if I'm applying to this job, I'm going to apply to the GS7 because I have the experience and I think that I should. Well, essentially, whether or not you deserve it, those are things that you can argue later down the line. Although this isn't an avenue that I went, what I've heard from people is that if you 
apply for a GS5 to 9 or a GS5 to 11 job, uh, during the hiring process is really where you can say, hey, I have this experience, can I start at the GS7? And an HR person can look at that for you. People that don't understand this already, if you see a job that starts out at a GS5 and then goes up to a GS9 or a GS11, essentially the way that that works is in regular increments, meaning every year you're gonna get a regular raise. And what you can do is you can scroll to the bottom and see what the potential uh, job levels that you can go into are. And based on that, that's gonna be your yearly promotion. So if it's a GS5 to 11 or a GS5 to nine, it's gonna be the first year you work as a GS5, if that's where you enter. The second year, you'll be a GS7 most likely. Third year, you'll be a GS9. And if it goes up to 11, that'll take you to 11. One thing that's really convenient about this that I did not understand at the beginning when I was applying for jobs is that looking for jobs like this, even though they're a, G a lower GS level, so people that feel very qualified might not go for them, as you're getting these regular promotions, it's essentially putting you in categories that require master's degrees or grad school to get into. So a lot of people go through, get their master's degree, and then that allows you to get to a GS9 with no work experience. But you can pretty much just get paid to have two years of work experience, not have to go back to school to get a master's degree or anything like that. And then on the other end, you got paid the whole time, no extra debt, and you have a job that's up at the level and the responsibility that you desire. And through your actual federal work, if you are on this promotional scale, you're pretty much, from everything I've seen, always gonna have trainings that are gonna prepare you for whatever the next level is. And on top of that, if you do decide that you wanna leave the job and go somewhere in the future, that's something that actually carries a lot of weight is you get a lot of trainings, a lot of practical experience, and you get increasing responsibilities every single year. These are three tips that I wish that I had when I was first starting out in the process, and I hope somebody will find it helpful. If you have any ideas for future videos or something else that might help you out if you're a college student or even if you're in high school and you're just trying to think about uh, what your future might hold, um, I've done a lot of research on all this, and leave a comment down below if you have something that you specifically would want me to go over. Um, yeah, drop a like and consider subscribing. I am plan on making science videos and helping people getting started with their environmental career videos.